Well, I'm going to talk a little more about cessation tonight. And the first thing I'll say is that cessation is the same as Nibbana in Theravada Buddhism. That is the pinnacle experience. And it is an experience, I want to be clear. It's not just an understanding, it's not an aha, it's a, a felt sense experience. I mentioned last night, it's a lights out experience, so a dreamless sleep. And we only know what's happened after we awaken from cessation. It can last anywhere from a minute to I think the longest I've known is someone had a three hour episode which is a very long time. Uh, typically 15 to 30 minutes, 45 minutes, that's pretty, pretty typical for a deep experience. And I'll go through the, the four stages of awakening in Theravada Buddhism and how it relates to cessation in a minute. The traditional way for one to experience cessation, and uh, this is sort of from, from my teacher's presentation, He's a, he's a traditional Theravadan. And so the way he teaches is one would start first with concentration meditation. One would practice breath awareness, uh, hoping that it develops to the level of concentration of absorption or jhana. The jhanas in this tradition, the Pawak tradition, are considered by virtue of all the jhana teachers to be the highest bar and the reason for that is that there can't be any sense of a self and there can't be any thoughts. If either of those are present, it's not jhana. It's the second level of concentration, uh, which is access concentration. Very important level. We start with momentary concentration. Where's our awareness in this moment? And as we get more stable with our meditation, then we move into access concentration where we're staying with the object and it deepens from there. Access concentration affords purification of mind. Uh, there's also some goodies called the jhana factors. Things like bliss and joy uh, will self arise as a result of the concentration. We don't produce them, we don't make them happen, we don't take them as an object, they're a byproduct of the, the concentration. So typically, the way that my teacher would present it, one would do the sequence and the concentration meditation. There's a number, I don't remember the exact number, but maybe 17 meditations, heart meditations, protective meditations, a bunch of different ones. The traditional ones aren't really taught here in the West, the 32 body parts, skeleton meditation. I did an online uh, Zoom retreat. We did the four elements, earth, water, fire, and wind. And that's the, the conclusion of the concentration and the samadhi portion of the path. And then one moves into vipassana. And at the, there's, there are eight stages of insight in the vipassana practice. And towards the end of that, towards the higher end of that, uh, would be the arising and passing away stage. And that's where we're, we're, our concentration is getting deep enough. We're seeing phenomenon, we're seeing thoughts, we're seeing materiality within our experience, mentality arise and pass away. And when that's firmly established, then the instruction is to move to the passing away, the dissolving side of it. And by staying with that and going deep enough, the intention is that that will open into the absolute and cessation. So that's the traditional way of accessing uh, cessation or nibbana. There also is a, an access on the concentration side. Um, in, with every absorption, every jhana, there's an access concentration and an absorption. And the access concentration from the eighth jhana, which is the highest jhana, and the first four jhanas are form jhanas. They're in the body. They're purifying the body and the sense of self relating to the body. And the 
fourth through eighth, fifth through eighth jhanas are called the formless realms or formless jhanas. And those happen, we experience those outside the body. That's why I have us working with the crown chakra because that's the portal, that's the exit point and entry point for the formless jhanas. Not that I'm expecting that to arise here, but just so you know, that's how that works. And so from access concentration of the eighth jhana, one can set an intention and can resolve and can, uh, the absolute can open and cessation can present. So that's uh, another way in. That was the first way I learned or experienced cessation was through the eighth jhana access concentration. It wasn't taught, I just stumbled on it when I was there. I saw the portal. I'm not the only one that's done that, so I'm not saying that. And then also in the Zen tradition, in the process of awakening of Kensho, uh, cessation can open, does open for a period of time. And I've been checking with the Zen masters that I've been working with who have been coming to me for leading, leading them as I'm doing here. And uh, it's my experience and their experience that cessation also arises in the resolution of koans. It's not long, it's very brief, but it does seem to be a, a theme that I'm seeing as I'm questioning these folks. And then finally, the fourth way that I know cessation can arise is what we're doing through guided meditations. There can be a transmission and there can be a resonance and an opening. So, and that's what we're focusing on, is more the spontaneous guided entry point. Any questions on that material? Okay. So in traditional Theravadan Buddhism, there are four stages of awakening. Uh, the first is called stream entry, the second once returner, the third non-returner, and the fourth, the fourth arahant. I'll say first about the fourth stage of awakening. The traditional view is that there's only one or two arahants per generation. So I suspect um, that folks like the Ajahn Chahs and the Mahasi Sayadaws are probably getting that brass ring. So I don't think that's <laughs> terribly viable for the rest of us. So just to say that. But the first stage, stream entry, is one that does happen. And I will say that the, um, some of the American Theravadan Buddhist teachers do accept a Zen awakening, a Kensho, as stream entry. So there is some dialogue going on there. There's a few of us that cross over between the two traditions, so I think that's part of what's informed that. So in cessation, as we've been doing, we're moving in to the absolute. Um, tonight, what happened was the absolute presented the manifest, the love and present side. That seems to happen when we focus on the absent side. At some point, the absolute will move us into the love and presence to keep a balance going. So as we move deeper into the absence, particularly the peace, peacefulness and stillness, that, that's the journey that we take to cessation. We just continue deeper and deeper, getting drawn deeper. And there comes a point when we're really deep in the peacefulness and the stillness where there will be a felt sense that feels like a tractor beam. It feels, um, I've, I've, I feel this and others have as well on these kind of retreats. It feels like there's a pull. There's this invitation, this pull. And when I'm leading these meditations, I can lead up to that point. I can't cross anybody over, it doesn't work that way. So the reason is because then each person must affirmatively decide for themselves, they must say yes for cessation to arise. So occasionally people worry, I'm gonna be pulled in involuntarily and that doesn't happen. It, you must assent, you must say yes from inside. There must be a willingness. So as that happens, there's, as we move deeper into the peacefulness and stillness, 
what's functioning is consciousness, which I mentioned last night. I define that as awareness plus reflective capability. We can remember historically so we can do some comparisons. They're not really done conceptually, but they're, they're done in some, some other way, which I can't really explain. And we also have awareness, pure awareness, so direct awareness. We know, if I say, what is this? The only way we know through pure awareness is by tasting. Now I know what water is. I don't need to resort to concepts. It's wet, it's liquid. I don't need to go there. So that's the experience in the absolute, is direct contact, direct knowing. And as we move deeper, if we feel that pull, and if we accept in the particular way or right way, then cessation will unfold. And we'll know this because we'll start seeing gaps in our ability to form language. Or you might have a sense of what's happening and all of a sudden there's gaps of space. There's just not, no mentality at all, or it's diminishing, I'll say that. And as we go closer, then consciousness begins to shut down. So our sense of awareness with any history, any, any memory, that goes dormant. And so what's left is pure awareness. Again, direct awareness through knowing, through contact. And then as we go deeper still, that begins to dial down and that eventually shuts off. So it's nothing. We have no perception. We have no awareness. There's no sense of me. There's no sense of what's happening. There's no sense of the environment. Everything shuts down. So if it's anything less than that, it's not cessation. If you're aware of things, if you're perceiving it's not cessation. You can get close, but you can't uh, have the full experience unless it's a lights out. So part of the benefit of cessation, and we only know cessation, as I mentioned, upon awakening from cessation, having our awareness and consciousness reactivated, is it suspends all forms of self-identity identity as a body, as a physicality, as a mind, as a personality, um, as habit patterns, all of that is suspended in cessation. And so when we reawaken, we realize on some level that what we take ourselves to be is not permanent. It's conditioned. It's not unconditioned. And rather than that being something that's disturbing, it's very satisfying to know that I'm not just relegated to this particular brain process and this particular physicality. That's just a presentation. So the stream enterer, the conviction in a separate self, the view of that self are shattered. It doesn't mean the personality is no longer in existence but it means the view, the conviction that, of, that holds the view of personality is broken. So you will still see from personality at times, but you won't be convinced that's the ultimate reality. You will simply know, oh, okay, I'm sort of in the history of Stephen here, I'm looking at all these things and relating to them, but we know fundamentally it's not ultimate reality. This isn't the base. Cessation is the base. And, and I'm mentioning this because this gets a lot of misinterpretation. I've heard teachers talk about this, that the, the personality is gone, and I think it sets people up for a lot of problems if they think that's the case, get into a lot of bad behavior. So attachment to rites and rituals is also suspended, is broken. And this seems to be that, I, I think in the ancient days, people had a lot of investment in rituals. They thought the rituals were representing ultimate reality. And so people would spend a lot of energy on rituals. We're not really wired that way in the West. So I don't think this is as true for us. 
but the sense, the, the conviction that the rituals and, and ceremony and stuff is really the truth is, is broken. And then doubt about the Buddha, his enlightenment, the teachings, the practices is also vanquished. We no longer have doubt in teacher teaching. We may still in self, but we don't have doubt in the teachings because we've been to the source. We know where everything comes from and we know it's truth. So we don't need to rely upon the Buddha. At that point we know, yep, this is the channel that he was in. So I totally get it. So after, and, and I want to say too, that not every experience of cessation moves one along the enlightenment path. One can have an experience that isn't quite deep enough to dislodge uh, the sense of self, the view of self. So you can have multiple experiences of cessation that don't result, result in an advancement on the four stages. Uh, people sometimes think that's the truth, but no, we will have a lot of, uh, or we can have a lot of contact and experience that's uh, important and it moves us along developmentally, but there are sort of, uh, there are the experiences that are the significant ones. There, there's a big shift after it. 